Hello world, it's Siraj. And in this video, we're gonna talk about an all-in-one blockchain solution called Essentia. Essentia is a decentralized exchange platform that allows users to trade all sorts of cryptocurrencies with each other peer to peer. That means that we don't have to trust a central third party to take charge of our transaction, we can just transact our currencies, be it Bitcoin or Ethereum directly. In this video, we're going to take a look at their platform and then we're going to build one of their most important features in the Solidity smart contract scripting language called an atomic swap. And I'll explain what that is in a second, but let's first start off by looking at the wallet, the essential wallet, and seeing what sorts of features there are. So if we download this wallet for Mac or Windows or whatever platform you have, you can see that we have different balances for different coins. So we have the Essentia coin, ESSX, which is what it's listed as. We have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, all sorts of coins that we can add to this wallet. And then we can exchange with each other without needing a centralized third party, like say Coinbase, for example. And there are all sorts of Ethereum offshoots. They're called ERC20 tokens. These are tokens that are built on the Ethereum blockchain. We can have any of them here as well. Let's just add two of them, Ethos and Quantstamp. We'll just add both of them and then boom, they're gonna show up um, right next to us, they're gonna show up right there. We can trade them, we can do all sorts of things with them. But basically with Essentia, you can do a lot. You can trade currencies, you can earn a passive income by signing up to be what's called a validator in the network, a master node. Um, and, or you can just do different sorts of blockchain open source work to hone your skills here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna download this sample um, file from, uh, from GitHub. It's called EtherSwap. ETH Atomic Swap, and this is one of the original Ethereum Atomic Swap contract repositories on GitHub, and it allows us to convert all sorts of ERC-20 tokens to Bitcoin and vice versa. We're going to build our own, and this thing is compiled using the Truffle framework, which is great for compiling Ethereum contracts. We're also going to download and run what's called Ganache, which is a simple Ethereum blockchain that allows us to then perform all sorts of smart contract operations on it without having to... Uh, perform this on the main net so we won't lose actual money. And once we do that, we'll see that uh, we've downloaded it, we've downloaded this project. We can then run all sorts of tests uh, tests on the existing scripts to see that they're doing their job, and they are. So we'll run those tests, and after that, we're gonna write our own Solidity script because I wanna show you what an atomic swap actually looks like. So let's write our own very simple script here for atomic swaps to explain what this decentralized exchange mechanism actually looks like. So like I said before, atomic swaps are essentially a way for us to exchange cryptocurrencies, be it Ethereum and Bitcoin, without needing a third party. And that's essentially what Essentia is. It is a an open source, transparent platform. We can go see the code on GitHub. Um, and so we don't have to trust Essentia as a team or as a central server to make that exchange, which is super powerful, right? We could lose our coins if they're in some a centralized exchange and that exchange gets hacked. So how do we do this? Well, let's start off by writing out this script. This is gonna be what's called a Solidity script, which is the Ethereum programming language. And really, I, this is a feature that Essentia uses, atomic swaps, to allow us to have this, this decentralized exchange. And the easiest way to show you this is to import Solidity. So we're going to import Solidity, a, a given version of Solidity. And once we've imported Solidity, we're going to uh, then uh, build this contract. So what kind of contract is this? So this is called an atomic swap. And uh, there, there's several steps to what this looks like, but before we get into those steps, I'm gonna continue um, initializing what this contract looks like. So by the way, these contracts are essentially functions that don't live on a server, they live on the Ethereum world computer. So this is a, the state of the network is shared amongst every node in the Ethereum network. And so unlike a central server, when this function runs, think of it like a slot machine where you put coins in and the function runs. Instead of being on a central server, instead of needing to be a part of a larger system, this is this function can just run separately. It can run in an atomic way, right? That's the keyword, atomic. And it lives on the Ethereum world computer. Nobody can change it, right? You would have to change the entire network to change it. And so it is an unstoppable function, and that's what this will be. And so we're going to deploy this to the Ethereum network, this atomic swap function. And inside of this, we're going to create our first structure. So let's say I'm Satoshi Nakamoto, and you are Vitalik Buterin, and I have Bitcoin and you've got Ethereum, and we want to exchange these two cryptocurrencies. How do we do that? Well, what we do is we have Satoshi. 
Um, that's our first address in this swap structure. We then have Vitalik and that's our second. And once we have Satoshi, we've got Vitalik, we have an unsigned integer, which is 256 bits, means it's only gonna be positive. It cannot be negative. We have a lock and we have a key. And I'll tell, tell you exactly what these two things mean, the lock and the key. So the way this works is let's say I'm Satoshi, you're Vitalik, we wanna trade Bitcoin and Ethereum. Here's how it works. Here's how the process is going to work. I am going to deposit my Bitcoin into a contract address. So this is a third party escrow that's not controlled by any one party, it's controlled by the entire Ethereum network. So essentially no single individual controls it. So I'm gonna deposit my Bitcoin into this contract address. I'm gonna create it and deposit it in there. I'm gonna get back to me returned a key and a value. So the value is gonna be a value, just you know, a normal scalar value. The key is gonna be a hash. I'm then going to send you that hash, the key. And then using that hash, you are going to generate your own contract address, your own separate third party store of your Ethereum. And then you're gonna store your Ethereum in there. So I'm storing my Bitcoin into this third party address. You stored your Ethereum into your third party address. And then what I can do is then I can then unlock the Ethereum in your third party address. And then once I unlock it, I will retrieve it. Then, once I unlock it, then and only then will you be able to, using your key that is returned from that process, be able to unlock mine. So you can see in this process, and if nobody does anything in a certain amount of time, then the funds are returned to each respective participant. That's why it's called a hashed time lock. There's a timer involved. And so what, what happens here is, as you can see, it's not like I can just take your money and then keep my money and then run away. If I deposit something into this contract address and I retrieve your money, only you can get the money out of my contract address or vice versa. So in this way, we don't have to rely on each other to do the right thing. We are relying instead on cryptographic mathematical principles and the Ethereum world computer, which is essentially an unstoppable state stateful machine. So that's the basic idea. Let's now write this out, okay? So if we look at some of the code here, in the open function, what do we want to write? In the open function, we're going to write out a couple things here. So we're going to create this swap contract address, give it all those values that I talked about, who I am, who you are, the sender, the receiver, how long we want to wait for, what the key value pairs are, and then we're going to trigger that event. And then that's going to open the contract. And then what we, we also want to do is we want to make sure that there's an expiration date as well. If we aren't expiring this at the right time, that means that if somebody doesn't uh, deposit the right amount of funds in the right time, then the funds will be returned back to the respective senders and receivers. And that's what happens in this expire function. Lastly, in the close function, we're going to do the same, but we're gonna close that function. So uh, we're gonna return the funds, funds, not return them, but give the funds to the uh, other parties. That means that we've successfully deposited both of our Bitcoin and Ethereum. We've agreed to everything and we have unlocked everything. And so the exchange will occur. And so those are the three basic operations of an atomic swap operation. Obviously, there's much more to go into it. I just wanted to show you something very basic in the Solidity programming language. But this is essentially what Essentia does. It uses the atomic swap functionality to allow different people across all sorts of blockchains to exchange values without needing to trust each other or to trust even Essentia, which is super cool. And if we run the test on our own Solidity script, we can see that uh, there are everything is passing. It's only running on a test blockchain, but it works well. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Definitely go to Essentia's website, sign up for their Discord server, sign up to be a staker um, in their network for ESSX coins, um, and become a master node because that's a way to earn a passive income. I'm looking forward to building my own mining rig in the next few weeks, hopefully, or the next few months. Um, thank you for being here so much. Check out all the links in the video description. I love you guys. And until next time, happy learning.